I couldn't wait to step out here and turn up with y'all. I am loving this amazing energy. Thank you for that. As you can see, I got my b-ball with me because I am in a basketball mood. Yes, I am. Now, I have talked a lot about how much I love basketball, and now I get to share my love for basketball and the game with my son, my future MVP, D.O.J. in the house. Ah, listen, I know David's goal is to be in the NBA, so we are deep into it, and that's what, why I tell everyone I live in a basketball house and I am a basketball mom. Y'all need to see my skills sometime, but you don't want to see me on the court is all I'm saying. Okay? Listen, we watch, y'all can sit on down. We watch a lot of basketball like this year's women's NCAA championship game between Iowa and LSU. Listen, did y'all see that game? Don't it make you want to play some ball? Oh my God. It was one of the most talked about mashups in college ball. Listen, I am super excited today because our next guests are three extraordinary members of, yup, y'all better get up, dynamic LSU women's basketball team. They dominated the court during their team's historic win against Iowa and inspired millions while doing it. I am so excited about this. Please welcome NC Double A Women's Basketball Champions, Angel Reese, Flaugia Johnson, and Alexis Morris. Thank y'all so much for being here. I'm so proud of y'all. I don't even know what to do. You feel the love? Yeah. Did you feel the love? First of all, congratulations on your win. Thank you. Congratulations. How do y'all feel? It feels good. I mean, happy to be here <laughs> in LA. I mean, get away from school. So just being able to be here is fun. It's gonna be exciting. So what, what has life been like since the championship win? Life has been crazy. I mean, it's yeah. great. I mean, I love that we, we won the national championship for Baton Rouge and being able to go home, but we can't go out how we used to be able to go out. <laughs> even just to the grocery store, we gotta have security, even going yeah. to class and stuff. It's been crazy, but we embrace yeah. it. I mean, we love the fans and everybody yeah. that, that has embraced us and showed us love. Like, it's super busy. Super busy. It's busy? Oh, man. Super busy. I, I haven't slept in a little while. It's just a championship, but <laughs> it's been good. Like, you know, with NIL, we're able to capitalize on things like that. So just being busy, growing our fan base, and then growing women's basketball as a, as a sport. growing yeah. women's basketball. And that is for sure. Absolutely. That's all you got for me is absolutely. Has, oh, I has, got you. Okay. Yes, okay. I want to hear from all of you ladies. It just feels good to be celebrated. Um, as you should be. Not just, not just as basketball players, but as young black women doing this on one of the largest platforms at a PWR representing LSU. Like, it's bigger than us. Um, it's overwhelming, but it's definitely worth it. Like, we champs. Like, <laughs> we the champs. Oh, I love that. <laughs> we the champs. Yes. Look at that title. So, what, I mean, when you grew up having this dream, and now you're in the middle of it, or the beginning of it, did you ever think that you would, like, look, like y'all are leveling up women's basketball. Like, you're the faces of that. When I transferred to LSU, it was just for a fresh start. I just wanted a fresh start. I had been in college already for two years, and then coming to LSU one year, I just wanted love and have a coach that was super confident in me. And being able to have a coach that was confident in me in one year to embrace me and be who I am, and I am unapologetically angel, and that's who I am, and they embrace that. So I didn't have the thought of winning a championship. Like, I wanted to win a championship, but I just wanted happiness. And then to get all of this, this was just topped it off. Like, yeah. The icing on the cake, <laughs> ain't it? <laughs> oh, my God. So you've been able to take the moment in since the win? And I mean, it hit at, like, random times. You'd be like, wow, I'm a national champ. Like, oh, my God. But, like, I just love hitting you. So yeah, I, you feel me? Like, it's just, like, so much love. Like, you start realizing what you did. Like. It was bigger than a basketball game, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we got the ring, but like, it was bigger than that. We impacted it on different levels, so yeah. that's how you feel it. Yeah. You earned an LSU its first NCAA basketball champion title. Like, 
Man, I want to be on the team. I'm just saying. <laughs> we got a spot for you. We got a spot. Oh for my you. God! How old were you when you started? When you got into the game? I was about four. Yeah. Four, four years old. Yeah, I was about four. I was young. Three. <laughs> three? <laughs> yeah, I was three. Wow. Yeah. We're so proud of you. Thank you. You're doing amazing. <laughs> when I was in school. I didn't have people like you to look up to. Yeah. And I was almost on the basketball team with the ladies, but then I chose music. But I'm sure you're gonna inspire so many other young ladies. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you're the face of that. That's gonna inspire others to wanna do exactly what you're doing. And you're, you're making it like, you're trailblazing it mm -hmm. and setting the tone. So keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. okay. hard work paying on. Yeah, hard work paying on every time. So you, your team started off with nine new players this year. Nine new pieces, yep. Yeah, so how, is it, how do you build the chemistry together? You don't know. So when you get in the summertime, you, you come in and everybody's competing. Everybody wants to play. It's super competitive in the summertime. So our theme this year was piece it together. And to see how we could piece it together at the right time, I mean, this is coach's second year at LSU mm. in the league. So just being able to trust the coach and then trust each other. We had leadership. Alexis had been here before, so she kind of paved the way for us. And all of us just followed along. We all had a role in the team, and we all followed it to a team. Nobody got outside of their game. or they just Everybody played a role, and it was just, it was just perfect. <laughs> that is amazing. Will y'all stick around for a little bit? Yeah, we should. Sure. All right. Yeah, I love it. More with the ladies of LSU basketball. We'll be right back. We're back with our NCAA champion winners. I just love seeing that. Oh, my God. Angel, now, everyone's seen a clip of you and Caitlin Clark on the court. How, right? How was it to watch the teams win be overshadowed by that moment? <laughs> it was frustrating, I mean, but to see how much we've grown women's basketball over the couple weeks, I mean, 9.9 .9 million people watch the game. That's more than the men's. So I know, like, one day we're going down in the history books. Yes. So it's bigger than me. I mean, I'm so happy that we won the championship. And, I mean, I wish it was more talked about. And as much as we talked about the Caitlin situation, I want the national championship because we work just as hard. Yes. We work, we put a lot of sweat, tears into that championship. And people don't realize that. It's not, it's not easy to win a championship. Right. So just to be able to do that and then... It's, it's the best of all words. I'm happy that the situation happened, but at the same time, I'm a national champion, and, I, and I'm getting a ring. <laughs> <laughs> say it again! You better say it. Okay. Alexis and Flauté, what were your thoughts as this played out? I mean, personally, I didn't think it was going to be as big as the situation as it was. Because, like, I see Angel, she talk trash on the court all the time. You know what I mean? I see her the whole season, you know what I'm saying? And Kaylin did as well yes. the game previous. And I was like, okay, like, it's two strong personality, two dominant players. But in that moment, I was like, I didn't know how big it was going to be, but it was bigger for the women's game. And a lot of people, they was like, were y'all mad at Angel because of... I'm like, nah, like, first of all, Angel's going to be her regardless, and we support that. But, like, it was like... This did something bigger than y'all think, because now you got people that are never think about watching women's basketball. They tuned in. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got it. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it just grew the game, and I, it was, I was happy to be a part of that and be a national champion at the same time. You can't complain about too much after that. Yeah, you can't. About every time you you can't. My outlook, how I feel, first I was like disrespectful, and then I looked at it from a different perspective. Even though we're looking at it like the world made it a race thing, so for a matchup like Angel and Kaylin Clark, to have 9.9 .9 million views, like, that's remarkable. Like, will that ever be done? Like, the, go the goal is to grow women's basketball. So it was bigger than just that moment. And it took me a minute to, like, view it from their perspective of things. Like, it's, it's good. Like, it's all good. It's, it, you, you can view it how you want to view it, but there's no room for racism in sports. Like, it, they're, they're, keep racism out of sports. Sports bring us together no matter skin color, where you're from. Background, childhood traumas, it's a place for us to be together and be one and be a family. So I, for my advice to anybody that's, you know, supporting that behavior, like, don't bring race in sports, period. Racism in sports. And acknowledge greatness. And, and acknowledge greatness. And you see it as you should. And you guys have everybody, like you said, nine million viewers. You have had some of everybody watching from Obama to, like, Magic Johnson? I know, like, right? how does that feel? They said the price went up. The, the, price. the price went Yesterday's up. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Ah! It is not. 
Okay. Period. It's crazy. Yeah. Prices, not today's price. Yeah, sure. Wow. Okay, so amazing. Okay, and then as far as the media, like what was portrayed in the media, like I always say, you know, sometimes the devil, whatever he may use for your bad, will turn into your good. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And you know, it, it it still put the spotlight on you, ladies. Oh, yeah. You know, and I know sometimes when you're in the spotlight, and you're gonna be in there even more. But first of all, you ladies have handled yourselves exceptionally well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're a great representation, and you are greatness. You know, and you will continue. You, as always, my mom used to teach us, baby, you can show them better than you can tell them. <laughs> and you're definitely doing that. Okay. You know, so how does it, you know, how did it feel when you got to, to see how the media portrayed everything? People don't realize that me and Caitlyn are cool. Like, it was no beef. Like, yes. people don't realize that and how competitive both of us are. We're the top of our class, and to see how much we've grown women's basketball within a year, that was what it was for both of us. So for them to blow it up to make it seem like it was something that it wasn't was, I mean, it was tough because we just, like I said, we worked hard for the championship, and we don't want it to make it seem like there's, there's other things that's going on. Let's just highlight the championship because we did work hard mm -hmm. and we put in the work and we won the natty. Like, period. Yeah. I wanna, I wanna piggyback off of that too. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna follow up with what Angel said. I feel like um, you shouldn't villainize one person and then put another on a pedestal. Keep the same energy. Yeah, so keep that same energy. Keep the same yeah, energy. seriously. Keep that same energy and don't put us in a box. Don't try to put us in no type of box. Like women, we can do it all. Yes. And you are, we are doing it all, as we can see, in many different forms. Oh, my goodness. So ESPN Championship was the most watched women's college game to date. I love saying that. Ever think that the game would have such a huge impact on women's basketball? No, not, not, not really. I mean, everybody says they don't. Why watch women's basketball? It's boring. People say nobody watches the game. But to see that many people that we've impacted, to see even the respect from all the different kinds of people. We have rappers, we have the president, we have, we have so many different people say like, wow, y'all set the tone. Like y'all set the tone to something that's bigger. And then now to know that we'll go down in the history books for just being trailblazers. Right. trailblazers. To be a black queen and just to be who I am, like I'm just, I'm just so happy. And I really embrace, I embrace who, who, who we are. Like I love these girls and just to be able to see that we, what we've done in a year is just, it's crazy. Do y'all realize, like, the role models that you're becoming? Because by you standing your ground and, and, and letting your passion drive you, that's an inspiration to uh, people, young people, anybody. You know what I mean? To see you do that. Like, do you realize the impact as a role model that you're having? I mean, not really. I was so, <laughs> You're just being you, When huh? I, walk in a I walked in a store the other day and this lady just thanked me. She was like, thank you, because my daughter right here, she doesn't have a voice. She doesn't have, she doesn't have the platform that you have. I just want to thank you because she, she never would be able to speak out on what she believes in, but you did it for, for us. Mm -hmm. You did it. And it I'm, inspired I'm here me in too. I'm in California and I'm like, I don't think, I think I'm only inspiring people back home. Like, I don't really realize how many mm -hmm. people actually I've, I've inspired. So. Well, definitely, I understand the impact and I was like, I want to make sure I use my platform to keep pushing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, push a positive message. Push that affirmation. Push that positivity. Because now I know, like, there's so many young girls that want to be like me. Regardless of their age, regardless of their skin color, regardless of what, like, they want to be like us. Yes. You know what I mean? So I think that's important to know that the impact you got. Yeah. yeah, as far as the impact, like, now when I go in the airport, like little kids running up to me, kids got my gear on from all over the country. I got DMs from people internationally. I be like, y'all know me? Like, <laughs> y'all was watching us? So yeah, I feel it. I definitely feel the impact. But like Flo J said, just being that role model, having younger girls look up to us is most is more important. And being that positive figure that they can look up to is like, it's, it's honoring and it's, it's something that we all cherish. It shows. Now, Angel, you're known as the Bayou Barbie in fashion, like, and off the court. Tell us about that. I mean, I've always been, I... <laughs> yes! Look good. I, I feel like look good, play good. I mean, that's, that's just how I am. I make sure my lashes are done, my nails and hair, my edges is on, on fleek, so... I like... <laughs> I feel like I can just tap into so many different things, and I think that's has helped me grow my brand. I mean, a lot of people 
love me because I'm being able to show both things on the court. On the court, I'm it's no games to be played. Like on the court, is I'm about my business, but off the court, I'm a girly girl. I'm gonna dress up. I'm gonna be cute. I'm gonna put on a skirt, some tennis shoes, and be cute. Like I think a lot of people put the stereotype that you're supposed to look a certain way on the court. You're not supposed to have your nails on. You're too focused on your makeup. No, I'm gonna look good, and I'm gonna have my lashes and makeup on, <laughs> and I'm gonna still, and I'm gonna still, yeah, I'm gonna get to it. Oh God. I have to ask all you ladies, where do you get your confidence from? I get my confidence from my mama. I mean, she, yeah. for sure. I'm for sure. My mama. Yeah. My mama. She instilled in me, like, young, that I could do anything that I wanted to do. And don't let nobody put, like, ceilings on you, so. Yeah. Mm. For sure. Mm. Yeah, my mama and my granny, for sure. That's two strong women right there. Yes. yes. They, they said what they said. You said what we said. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> all right, more with the ladies of LSU basketball. We'll be right back. We're back with the amazing LSU basketball champions. Okay, listen. Now, let me, let me get this right. It was just reported you are the highest projected earner in women's college basketball. How does that feel? <laughs> it's a blessing. God did. I can't do this without God. And I mean, from the national championship game, I mean, the price went up. Everything has just went up since then. And just to being able to see so many people want to work with me as a black woman and to being able to stand on that and have young girls look like I can do that. You can do both. You, you can do both. So I've always embraced that. And to be in this situation is a blessing. So I can't do it without that. Now, Alexis, congrats on joining the Connecticut Sun. Go Suns, baby. Yes, ma'am. When I was when I was eight years old, I remember like coming from school and I just came from practice. And my mom was like, she just randomly asked me like, what you want to do? And at eight years old, most kids don't really just know. I told her, um, I want to be a professional basketball player. Like I didn't know how she was gonna react or what. she was just like, this was stuck with me like throughout my life. She kept saying, I'm gonna do whatever it takes as a mother. I'm gonna make all the sacrifices for you to be able to live your dream and. That's literally why I'm a pro today. So I'm gonna give that credit to my mom. Like, if it wasn't for my mom, like, I definitely wouldn't be. I wouldn't be here today. So I love you, mom. Aww. <laughs> Y'all are cleaning up. You also received the key to your hometown. Yes, ma'am. I got the key to the city. What up, mama? <laughs> oh my God. Y'all are on the road. Okay. And Flo J, you're also a rap artist. <laughs> How do you? How do you balance both worlds? Man, I just, I work real hard. I wake up real early. I go to sleep real late and do it all over again. I think if you really want something bad enough, you're going to make it happen. So I just, I make it happen. And then something we have in common, we both, you know, we was on the show with, with Simon Cow. <laughs> My experience was a little different. <laughs> How was that for you? Man, that was like, that was my awakening of like, wow, you really can do this. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't a dream of me being in my bedroom rapping. Like, it was like, you can really be a star. Simon Cowell, he came back. He was like, Flaje, you a superstar. And I was like, whoa, Simon? That ain't easy to get something to that say. Ain't easy. Let me you, tell you. You know what I'm saying? And when I got that, that just gave me the confidence I needed to just keep going as an artist. Like, when I got the golden buzzer, it, it was up from then. That, it is still the confidence in me that I needed. Oh my God. Okay, now, you can't come to the happy place and not, not ask you to bless us with just a little freestyle. No. Don't you want to hear it? Oh, here, look, I got a whole mic fight. Okay. okay, get it. Oh, my God. Look. It's crazy, I'm the one they want to represent. Young black girl, I could probably be the president. I'm the voice of the youth, you hear my tone, I think it's evident, I know who I am. They mistake my confidence for arrogance. I, I think it's different, cause I don't take my clothes off. I just play my role, dawg, I can't sell my soul, y'all. I just shoot a three, put my arm up, I guess I show off. They sleep, I let them doze off. Wake them up, oh yeah, it's roll call. My chocolate is beautiful, I'm rocking it per usual. I'm loving every piece, man, from my top into my cuticles. Trying to play with my head, real love won't be confusing you. I learned Make sure the one you put in first is also choosing you. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Amen to that. You ain't. <laughs> you ain't. Drop the mic. You ain't. Oh my God. Listen. She ain't. Y'all, she ain't. She ain't. <laughs> Drop the mic. 
You said what table. you said. <laughs> in, in the table, baby. You can have it all. You did that. <laughs> Listen, you ladies are on the roll. I am so honored and so proud to have you here and for us all to be able to witness the greatness and the, the, the groundbreakingness y'all are doing. I just have to ask, like, because you're still really young. What's next for each of you? Oh, what man. else do you want to achieve? Man, I'm trying to run it back. Like, I'm trying to run it back. <laughs> I'm, I want to get another national championship. Um, Why not? Uh, Why not? Me and, me and Flaugier are about to go to USA Basketball, so we're going to try to get a gold medal. So that's going to... Yes! Let's see. And, I mean, just having fun and being happy. That's, I just want that's happiness. That's right. Uh, me personally, like, I'm a rapper, I'm a basketball player, but I want to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want to... I want to be a businesswoman. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, it's no ceilings on what I can do. I know that God got me on the right path, and man, I just want to be able to reach my full potential. For sure. Yes. Oh, and as far as me, pro life, y'all know what it's like. I'm in the real world now, so I'm not in college, so I'm just figuring it out. But when I get adjusted, I want to go to law school. So I'll play a few more years. I play a few years professionally, and then I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go to law school. You know, I want to own my own sports agency and sign athletes. Mm. Be, a, be a sports lawyer. Yeah. And then they super smart. <laughs> Y'all better be smart. Oh my God. So years from now, when you look back, what will you reflect on most? I just want to, people to know how I remember. I just want to be remembered in the right way. I want to know that I've, I've led, a, led an example. And like Angel Reese, you. You were that girl, and you were the one that I looked up to. So I just want to lead by example. You are. I think, like, I'll reflect on the journey and the impact. I think the best thing you can do is inspire before you expire. And so just being able to, to leave that impact and leave that legacy, that's all I wanted to do. Wow. <laughs> when I look back, I want to be remembered as she was a tough player. She was a genuine sweet soul. And I loved everything. I gave everything, all I had to LSU. Mm. So I just want to be remembered as a good person, a good, a good human being. That's it. Y'all bringing tears to my eyes. Oh my God, this is such a pleasure. We see you, we appreciate you. And we want you to stick around. Can you stick around a little yeah, bit longer? <laughs> We're going to have a little fun. We'll be right back. Ooh, this is gonna be fun. Welcome back. Since we have our very talented LSU All-Stars in the building, we thought we'd play our special edition of our game, Who Dead Is? Oh, they ready, ready. Okay, ladies. This game is like musical chairs, but with a twist. You will walk around the chairs until I press the button to stop the music. Once the music stops, start shooting. If you make it, you'll grab a chair. Last person to make a basket gets, what, benched? Okay. <laughs> Once all the chairs are gone and one person is left, they'll be crowned the MVP. Y'all got it? All right, you better look me up and down. All right, <laughs> let's get this party started! <laughs> yeah, we're gonna start the music and y'all gonna get to it. Shaka laka, shaka laka, cha, 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 Oh, you want to plead your case? The ball ran over there, so <laughs> somebody got to get up. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh. OK. So, Jay, you, you right I'm there. Chilling, I'm chilling, I'm chilling. You, you chilling, but you did an excellent job, because you know you know we support here at J-Hub Productions. All right. Well, y'all got to get up and get rid of one chair. Because we down the one. See, what y'all don't want is me in this game, because I'm just trying to... I'm gonna stay oh, right here and do my part. <laughs> okay, one chair down. Okay, time for one more round. Y'all ready? Here we go. Come on, 
Miss Los Angeles, you could be busting a rhyme over this right now. Right. Uh, 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 She said, we can what, the what, the what, the what? Alexis, you're okay, going to have to join her I'm over go, here coach. I'm on the bench. Coach. But y'all did a wonderful job, which means Angel won. Okay. All right. You, you did that right. Like, uh, uh. Okay. You ladies are all winners. So we have a little something for all of you because y'all shine bright like a diamond. Bring it on out. Thank you so much for being here. I look forward to your next season. Put me on the team. I'm just saying. We'll be right back. Next guest is no stranger to the happy place. She is a life and relationship coach who has only one goal, and that's for us to live our best lives. Please welcome Rhea Williams. Let me get in my place. That's right. I'm Hi. so happy you're back. I'm so grateful. Oh, thank you for having me back in your happy home. Hey, y'all. Hey. <laughs> oh, my God. So tell me about the response you got. Oh, Lord, yeah, I have a heart palpitation going on. Okay, so it was so overwhelming. It was so overwhelming. I had hundreds wow. of people reaching out to me, Jennifer. It just speaks to who you are, how amazing you are. Okay. People were like, these five tips are right on time. The green suit, the fresh press. Sisters, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Everything. I'm like, everyone was just overwhelmed, and I'm just so grateful, and I have to thank the most special person to me, my mom, okay, who is here Your today. mom's here. She is. Mom, where are you? Hey, girl. Hey. I have to thank my mom. Let me make you laugh. My mom was stalking the pages, YouTube, oh, um, the YouTube page for Jennifer Hudson uh -huh. Show, and every day she's like running those numbers on the views. My mom predicted we were gonna get over 10,000, and oh, we had 12. God. So thank you. Yo, mom. <laughs> I love you. I'm so happy. Can you remind everyone of the tips from last time? That I you would gave? love to. So you guys want a reminder? Okay, here we go. So tip number one was knowing who you are. That is so crucial. Knowing who you are, knowing what you like, knowing what works for you, what doesn't. Number two, APP for the mm -hmm. acronym people. Assess, prioritize, and plan. So for those that feel overloaded and don't know where to start, that's a good one, APP. Number three, setting healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. So I mean primarily with you. So your yeses are yes, your no is no. Number four, cultivating healthy relationships and friendships. And I didn't mean just romantic ones. That includes family members as well. So cultivating them, working on them, don't allow them to just be without putting the work in. And number five is setting that time for Y-O-U. Okay, that's, that's it. <laughs> These are timeless tips and they work, okay? They work. Oh my God, do. that's a whole master class Hello? right there. Hello, master Thank class. you for that reminder. You're now, welcome. like we said, a lot of viewers reached out, so we have one here on Zoom right now that wants some advice. I can't wait. Hey. Rhonda, you there? Hey, Jennifer, I'm oh, here. Come on, I'm from Chicago. Chicago? Oh, oh my God. I love it. What's, what's your question? Um, what resonated with me was the boundaries and also Rhea says, you know if something is serving you or depleting you. Mm. Um, and that day, actually, I broke up with my boyfriend of four years. And it just gave me confirmation, like, I'm doing the right thing. This is depleting me. It's not serving me any longer. So with that being said, I want to know, how long should I wait to date? Woo! Girl, you better be on it. Girl, you better be on it. And hello with the color. We are all on the same frequency. <laughs> so first of all, Rhonda, thank you for your question. I'm so grateful. Rhonda actually sent me a message on Instagram, so that just touched me. Breakups are hard, okay? I'm telling you what I know. And how we get through them really determines the direction we move in going forward, okay? So I want, first want to commend you for wanting more for yourself, because that's tough in itself, is to break away from something that doesn't serve you. So this is what comes to mind. I don't stick to like a cookie cutter approach with regard to time and it's because relationships are different and as are our healing journeys, they just look different. So whether it's 30 days, whether it's 60 days, whether it's 90, my mom always taught me, don't write no checks, your butt can't cash. Mm. Okay? She says it a little different, but it's daytime TV. <laughs> so, but the truth is, don't set a goal for me. Do it for you. So if you want to start with a month, three months, do that and honor it. But here's the, here's the thing. It's not about how much time, it's what you do with that time. Oh, okay? yes. So spending the time to think about what served you, what didn't, what was your role. We often want to blame the person and put all the heat on them. You had a role in that as well. So thinking about that, that's what filling your cup 
really looks like, you know? And especially if you are a giver and, you know, you're always serving other people, you have to be able to think, like, if I don't want to spend time with me, why would anybody else, you know? So I like to think about it as a game of um, double dutch. I'm telling my age, because I don't know if kids even know what double dutch <laughs> is. But double dutch, you know, you're just moving just to move. You don't want to do that when you're not going anywhere. It's more of like hopscotch. So where it's like one step at a time, but you're moving forward one step at a time, OK? So that's my advice. And I just want to encourage you to just stay with it. Use that strength to not go backwards. You want to go forward. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Will you stick around for a little bit? Girl, yes, I will. All right. You ask me twice. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back. We're back with life and relationship coach Rhea Williams. OK, Rhea, we have someone with another question for you. Ah. Andrea, are you here? Hi, Rhea. Hi, Hi Jennifer. Hi. 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 I just started dating again. And I'm realizing that I'm getting a lot of unsolicited advice and opinions from girlfriends. How do you suggest I set a boundary with friends that keep butting into your relationship and dating life? Mm. Oh, Andrea, isn't this something? We call them the peanut gallery. Um, you know, the first thing I will say um, is kudos to you on getting out there. You're so beautiful. Thank you. The thing, healthy boundaries is not an easy thing. So I have a question for you. Are you ready to feel a little uncomfortable? Mm. <laughs> I have to grow, so yes. <laughs> That's right, because growth does not always feel good. So the thing about healthy boundaries, it is uncomfortable on both sides, okay? So the person that's setting them, especially because there's been a pattern. These are your friends, these are your girls. It's been an open door. So whenever you have to implement something different, you might feel a little like, oh. So it's uncomfortable for you, uncomfortable for them. But here's the thing. People do not rest in discomfort well, so they always feel like they have to jump in, or you might be like, you know what, it's okay, let me just let them. And then later on, you know that you've dishonored yourself, or you know that that pattern keeps going. So you have to be willing to be a disruptor, okay? Any pattern, if that is, it applies to any area of your life. If you have a pattern that consistently goes and you want to see something different, you got to disrupt that pattern. So I would say to them, or I wouldn't say anything, actually, it's really on you is opening that door and making sure that you honor when you want to keep your things private and sacred. Because you'll, you'll see a difference. You'll see a difference. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hmm. OK, what advice would you give someone who recognized they need to fix something but doesn't know the proper steps to take? My goodness. Well, one, that's a very popular thing, including for me. I am human. <laughs> um, the thing is, it starts with your mindset. So no matter which step, I got so much feedback on all the different steps, you know? Mm -hmm. But no matter which step, it's all about your mindset. It's all about realizing that, you know, the life, our life that we live is a summary of our choices. So whatever choices we've made, it's led us to where we are. And guess what? We can make new ones. <laughs> so as long as you believe that you can, if you have an open mind and don't allow life to weigh on you so heavily that you're just defeated, and if you get defeated, just know, I can make a new choice today. Mm -hmm. So it's always about just keeping yourself in that space, and it really does get lighter. Just remembering that, having the mindset, the willpower, the motivation. If you need me, I'm here, because sometimes you need someone to help pull you up out of that quicksand. But that's really what I tell clients. Nice. Okay, I cannot have you here without getting all the information I can out of I'm you. Here for so it. can you leave us with one more nugget of, like, wisdom that you can share? Absolutely. Based on what I heard today, I just want to remind you guys, like, we are all human. So all of the transitions that happen, life is not promised, okay? So make the change today, okay? Don't be afraid. There's always an opportunity for a fresh start. Make a new choice, whether it's relationship, whether it's friendships. You owe it to yourself. You deserve it. So that's it. You're amazing. You're amazing. Will you come back and see us? Will I? Absolutely. We want to come back, right, y'all? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Learn more about Rhea and how to live your best life. Visit our website at thejenniferhudsonshow.com. <laughs> we'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.